We now place ourselves in the loving presence of God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your divine love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant us by the same Holy Spirit to release what is right and just and always to rejoice in his consolation. To Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory, Glory to, to you, o Lord. Jesus again in reply spoke to the chief priests and elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time he sent other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fattened cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroy those murderers and burn their city. Then he said to his servants, the feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out therefore into the main roads and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike and the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came, to, came in to meet the guests, he saw a man there not dressed in a wedding garment. He said to him, my friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. Then the king said to his attendants, bind his hands and feet and cast him into the darkness outside where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. Good morning and good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. We have the same parable, more or less addressed to the chief priest and the disciple and the the chief priests this and the and elders the of the people. Although this time is about the wedding, so the king has invited people to the wedding feast. It was ready. The cubs are already on. They are there. Placing everything in the fullness of everything. The table is ready. The food is ready. So on and so forth. So the guests said, where are the guests? And the guests were not found. Others were killed. Others go with the murderers, so on and so forth. The second time, he sent his servants saying, tell those, tell those invited, I have my feast prepared and everything ready. ready. However, However, they ignored the feast. They did not go for the invitation. They will have their own businesses. So much that the king has asked the servants to go into the streets and highways. And there you have people. You have people really. And these people were invited and they came. But at the last moment, he saw one which is not in proper dress. So here we can see the properly dressed in the wedding except for the one person who is not around, who is not doing his share. So the king has handled him. He was sent out. What is the difference in our lives? And what is the meaning in our life? Perhaps 
we can have a wedding wherein we can fully be accounted for. We can fully be dressed. Although the question is, he was sent to the highways, he was sent to the streets in order to invite the invited. However, this one does not have the proper clothes. I don't know what you have in mind. But at the end of the day, we are, are called to have the wedding feast of the Lamb. We have to draw our best suit in order to be present to the feast of the King. So although these are, we are from the streets, we are from the highways, once we are invited, we have to go with the proper dress. Once we are invited, we have to go in a common pursuit of justice. Once we are invited, we have to live according to the king's demands. Quite hard, quite hard, but we realize that this is what the king has wanted. And the king is our God. Whatever be there before us, whatever be after us, we have to go and invite ourselves. We have to go and properly dressed. We have to go and surround the king with our best dress. The language is very clear. It's very clear. The wedding feast is there. We are all invited, but we have to be at a proper guest attire. Without that proper guest attire, we will never be entering the kingdom of heaven. Amen. This is Thank our you. sharing. And uh, our sharing would center on, of course, uh, in the invitation of the king who has invited you to the wedding, properly dressed, or whatever blessings you have this week, or whatever you have in terms of the love of God. So it's a moment of sharing together. Um, I'm, I'm just going to uh, share my thoughts about the, the gospel itself. Mm -hmm. And um, if we if we read the Bible, you know, like we we can see the very close parallelism between the story of this king sending out this uh, uh, people to invite people, uh, the others, the guests. <laughs> so maybe the first group that was sent out uh, in in actual situations well, were the kings, right? And uh, the first set of guests were the chosen people, the Israelites. And then not all of them wanted to go. In fact, many of them didn't want to go because they they uh, followed other religions. And then, so the kings were sent, okay? And then the prophets. So that's the second uh, invitor, so to speak, the prophets. And then um, when Jesus came, he sent out the apostles. And this time, it's not just the chosen people that the apostles are supposed to call into the banquet, but also the Gentiles, the rest of the world. I think this is, this is, this is what struck me when I heard, when I read this um, Bible, uh, I mean, the, <clears throat> the gospel, that um, the invitation now is for people on the highways and, and the byways, and that um, they're not just for the chosen people anymore, it's for everyone. So that means that it is very inclusive, but 
it doesn't mean that just because we are actually very special uh, compared to the chosen people, we are very special, we are more special in the sense that we were singled out to be part of the kingdom, to be part of the banquet. And so because of that, we should, uh, I think we should take more effort to be worthy of the invitation. And this is what putting on the right wedding garment means to me, that the invitation was given to us and that uh, it is our duty, it's our duty to put on the right garments. So what are the right garments? The, the right garments I think is um, what we should be wearing when we actually face God, uh, when we die, I think that's the right garment. And that's the garment that we should be wearing every day because we don't know when the wedding banquet is going to be for us. Um, I think that's uh, my contribution tonight. Yes. Thank you, Tita. Amen. Thank you, Tita, of course. Tumani. Uh, in reading and in reflecting on the gospel, no? It says about here in the first verses, he spoke to the chief priests and the elders and the peop of the people and parables. I think he's mentioning or he's uh, referring to the chosen people there, you no? Know? Chosen people. And uh, some came, maybe, but the rest ignored the invitation. Now the, the king asked his servants to go into the byways, you know? And I believe this, it is where we are. The Gentiles, you no, know? not the chosen one. And we were also invited. And uh, They were able to fill the hall with guests <clears throat> gathered from the highways. But what struck me is this 11th verse. But when the king came in to meet the guests, he saw a man there, not dressed in a wedding garment. And what is a wedding? man and woman. How is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? Where is your husband? Or where, where is your wife? See? And uh, the decision here is very great. Bind his hands and feet and cast him into the darkness outside but there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Amen. 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 Although the king said only to the man without uh, to the man without the uniform, no, without the wedding feast, without the garment. My friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? So it was not us either for a man or a woman, but only the wedding garment that we that is allowed for the wedding. But Tito Mani had uh, interpreted it in that way.
others. <laughs> Quite hard. <laughs> Kita bell. <laughs> uh, when when the gospel said that many are called but few are chosen and there were so many kinds of uh, invitees that were invited like the one who at first had refused because uh, of other businesses it's just like us when we are called by God then we don't respond right away because of the destructions in our lives like we have so many uh, things to do like earthly earthly works earthly desires mundane uh, reasons for us not to follow the lord in in a way we are like the, the invite is here in the gospel. Some really refused. Some said, cannot go because I still have to do some things. Then we're, we're also like that because of the destructions in our day-to-day -day living. And hopefully we are we're supposed to respond when the Lord will say, come, follow me. And I will make you fishers of men. Unlike the, the first apostles who responded right away, left everything, what they were doing, their livelihood, uh, and followed Jesus. We ought, we ought to do that too. But there are times when the worldly concerns in our day-to-day -day living uh, prevent us to do that. We are guilty of that. So we we really try our best to put on the garment of Jesus. We should we should try our very best to put on the garment of Jesus. So when we when we read this that there was one there was one invited guest who was not wearing a a wedding garment. It's because of, as I see it, it's because of the worldly concerns or he was not living or putting on the garment of Jesus, which is the virtues of Christ-like virtues, which we should. We are guilty of. I am guilty of. And we try our re our best to do that. That's how I see it when uh, you said, Father, that we when we wake up, we should always pray that we will become a saint today. Help me, Lord, become a saint today. Yes. Amen. 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 And it's a struggle. It's really a big struggle for me. It a daily struggle. Yes. Father, may I? Yes. Sure. Yeah. Just um on the on the same vein as uh what uh Bell said. To be um the garment, the wedding garment is our lives, um, our inner self, our inner spirituality. And we are, um, we are not in the same level. Some people are ready. Some people really are very into the desired wedding garment. Maybe if there is such yes. a thing as a desired wedding garment, and but some mm -hmm. people are still just struggling. Some people are are developing themselves spiritually and maybe not yet meeting the the standard but still working towards it as bell has said maybe some distractions maybe some things that prevent us but 
we are in different stages of spiritual development. Maybe the others are not ready for the word of God. Maybe the others, the, the soil is not ready. So maybe they're not really hearing the call of God. But also, I reflect on this and think that some hear the call of God, but not, how do I say this? They are still in the stage of development. They are in the stages of, I don't know, Father, because sometimes, you know, you're, when, when you work towards a deeper <laughs> spirituality, you are also, you also go through a stage of confusion, a stage of doubting yourself, a stage of, um, um, maybe, uh, do you call it the dark night of the soul or something like that? So, uh, when when I when I heard when I read this that this man was cast out because he's not wearing the wedding garment, probably this man really was not supposed to be there. I mean, maybe this man is not spiritually ready. This man needs to be um needs to work on on it some more. But sometimes I I think like, why do you have to throw him out? Why don't Why you don't help him? Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful question. Why do you to, Why do you have to throw him out? Yes, Father. I think the Although, king. Oh, I'm sorry. Please go ahead. Go. Although uh, my I, I'm thinking that the man who was thrown out did not really hear the gospel or he just went in for the invitation. Uh, it's different from the men who have uh, experienced struggles and then they are in still, but they have already that garment of wedding. Tita, Tita Merijun. Um. The, the, my interpretation, my personal interpretation is that the king is God. No? The king symbolizes yeah. God. The, yeah. the, uh, the wedding invitation or the banquet or the feast uh, symbolizes heaven or paradise. So the king, the king uh, wants to invite or is inviting everybody, but not everybody um, um, lis um, um, ad accepts not everybody accept the the invitation no? and then and then here is the wedding feast and then there was uh, there was uh, th there, there are people really uh, attended or joined the 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 banquet but there is one person that that was thrown out because he was not properly <laughs> dressed he was thrown out by the king because he was not properly properly dressed and then he was even dumb no hell that was hell so this properly not properly dressed for me is like uh um he went to he went to uh, to join the banquet you no know, the banquet but he was not ready because me, because the garment was not appropriate that means that uh, his garment the garment of his soul is full of sinfulness full of negativities, um, full of, uh, of um, in other words, uh, not clean. And then why did the king um, um, not only um, uh, drove him away, but but he was, uh, he was dumb. So that means that the king who represents uh, or symbolizes God, um, um, that, that's his uh, uh, judgment to, to that guest who, who wanted to join the banquet but was not clean enough or maybe full of sin, maybe full of sinfulness and um, maybe mortal sin. So that's Father. my interpretation. That uh, so that um, we have to be ready with the with the garment that whenever we are called to to join the banquet, we are we are accepted because we try our best to be to be clean and. Uh, uh, our soul is appropriate to join the banquet. Oh, Father, Thank to you, Tita. Yes, Pa. Mm -hmm. to, su to summarize what June said, when we say that the wedding, this man, he's, um, 
he's he's um he's not properly dressed. He does not have the wedding uh, garment. In sim, uh, well, in in what I'm I'm thinking now, are we saying that he was not holy enough? He was not holy no. enough. He had sins. He has all of these things, so he's not ready. <laughs> Basically, that's what June is saying. That's why he was dumped. Yeah, that's why he was dumped. We we're, we're grinding of the teeth, uh, you know, where the place where grinding of the teeth. So that's hell. So that means that he he his his uh, garment was not really really appropriate, full of but sinfulness, I, uh, full okay. of sinfulness. Well, but when I, you, when I you know. speak of when you speak of this parable, it is the last things of life. So when God is just truly is just so when the last things of life come so we have no other alternative but to wear our wedding garments so much so that when the day would come so we should be prepared for that may i say god, something father please god god is merciful yes. also father but okay. that's the that the, the end of life at the uh, so okay. the okay. The end of life, we see now the justice of God. But in the process, we see the mercy of God. So the mercy of God is all around. But the end of life is the justice of God. So Maybe I guess for me, this is... The... Maybe this is what what um, what important now for me to understand this parable, Father end of mm -hmm. life because yes. now it, yeah the end of life this is the end of life scenario god is just mm -hmm. and there is someone not holy enough did not do his part did not really repent or whatever so th th this this changes the way i'm looking at this because in the beginning i'm thinking but why do we have to throw him out if there is a process holiness is a process you, yes. you don't you don't say I want to be holy and tomorrow I will be holy. Every day of mm. our life we have struggles, we have temptations. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So but but, yeah. but thank, thank you, Father, for clarification. The end of life scenario makes it clear for me. Thank you very much. Well, in fact, for me at the first uh, <clears throat> at the first reading of it, parang sabi ko, but why he has to to uh, send the person outside yeah. into the wheeling and grinding of teeth. But I realize it is the last scenario of life wherein the justice of God would be done. Tita okay. Flor? Tita, can I say something? May I say something, yes, please? Mm -hmm. Yes, Okay. If we, if we read the gospel, when the king asked the guy who's improperly dressed, why are you here? And where is your um, wedding, wedding gown? Okay. You, we take note of the next sentence that that person did not say anything. Yes. Mm -hmm. That person did not say anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, because of all of this discussion, this reminds me of um, what I read about Saint Sister Faustina's experience of having visions of uh, being taken to having the chance to look at hell, and she said that very very few are in hell actually. And that her understanding is that mercy will always win over justice with God. So God will always give mercy over his justice. Mercy first before justice. That means, uh, hindi ka pwedeng pumunta sa hell, pero justice will take you to purgatory before you can go to heaven. Okay. So, bakit merong hell? Because that person who was asked by the king, why are you not properly dressed? 
did not ask for mercy, did not say anything. He kept, he or she kept quiet. I mean, he or she should have said, Lord, I am sorry. I did not know or I was too lazy. It is my fault, but have mercy on me. Then justice would have been held back and mercy would have taken over. In all of my readings, Father, this part, the one that uh, St. Sister Faustina said, that uh, very few people, actually very few souls are in purgatory, that means that uh, really God's mercy takes over justice all the time. We only need to be humble in the presence of God. We only need to ask for mercy each and every time. Yes. So that key sentence there that he did not say anything. He kept silent. So that means he did not ask for mercy. Why did he not ask for mercy? He was too proud. And pride is the primary sin. That's the first sin that took Adam and Eve out of uh, uh, Eden. Right. I think, I think this is my one big uh, take away from all these discussions. That key word, that key sentence, he kept quiet. And then that reminds me of what I read about the visions of St. Sister Faustina about mercy taking over justice all the time. We just have to ask for mercy. If there are few people in in hell, but that's a good news. <laughs> no, that's really, a, Father. That's a good news. <laughs> yung visions niya. Oh, oh. Uh -huh. visions mm -hmm. niya. So it's very, that's why I, very I like comforting. it. Mm -hmm. Very comforting. I like it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just like the two people on the left and to the right of Jesus, right? The other one asked forgiveness and mm -hmm. uh, you will mm -hmm. uh, please uh, yeah. take me with you. Dimas, Dimas yeah. asked for forgiveness. It's, it's just forgiveness. Like the two. One asked forgiveness and the other one did not. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so really, one talagang... forgiveness went to Jesus in paradise. Mm -hmm. As long as we live, as long as we live. So those that, that man is still alive and he asks for forgiveness. Forgiveness. Uh -huh. But <laughs> when you are dead, <laughs> wala na. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the comparison is also, Father, when the time of judgment comes and Jesus will now separate mm -hmm. the good and the bad. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, Kita Niki, you have some words? Ako, <laughs> Father? Yeah, you have some words? No, I'm just thinking about what uh, uh -huh. Tita, Co Tita Cora said. Because yes. I was reading this, this thing that I'm also reading about the souls in purgatory. And this lady hmm. who, who, has vis who is visited by the souls in purgatory, they're asking her help for prayers and all of that. And what mm. made a difference? Some of them were leading really not very good lives, and mm -hmm. some of them out of circumstances and all of that. And they they tell her this story, and um, mm -hmm. I think she's a Polish lady. And um, what made a difference, as Sister Atita Cora said, is some of them at the last minute because. You still have like a few seconds or a few minutes yes. when mm -hmm. when you're Nano, dying. Nano second, nano yes, second. Yes, yes. But some of them regretted. Some of them asked forgiveness, and that made a difference. Yes. That uh, made a difference. And the, yes. and she is she is told by the by the souls and, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So I I guess we are still given a few few minutes, Father. Nano, yes. nano, nano second, second. <laughs> nano second. We call that nano second. Yeah, nano second. That nano second. Yeah. That's what uh, Father Chris um, Aylor said. Aylor. Uh, Aylor. Uh, Aylor. Split second, split second. If you ask forgiveness, you will have yeah. forgiveness. Yeah. Uh. Yes, 
Yes. Mas kina na, nanosecond. Uh, no, I, 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 there was this one soul. There was this one soul that um she she was not really very good in her life and all of that. And she caused a lot of problems with people around her. And I think it was an accident or something like she was about to die. And she said, take me now so that other people won't have to to be bothered by me or something. So it's a kind of, a kind yes. of, and, uh, yes. uh, and it's a kind of like, okay, I'm not worth um, living in this world. Take me so that other people will not be bothered by me. And she was forgiven. Yeah. The, the magic the word here. for forgiveness. Ay, sige, tita. No, uh, please go ahead. Ay, tuloy, 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 tuloy po, tuloy po. Uh, this is just a repetition of the nanosecond that uh, Father Father Chris um, Aylar uh, has been emphasizing to us. That's why uh, this uh, nanosecond is like a fraction of a second. We don't know how long, but a fraction of a second uh, that we ask forgiveness, we will be forgiven. And that's uh, that's the reason why there is uh, there is uh, forgiveness or salvation in those who committed suicide. That's what he told us, Father Chris just, Ayler. You just uh, even have to pray the chocolate of the divine yeah, mercies, uh -huh. and mm -hmm. you will save a soul who committed suicide. Yes. Uh, so there is salvation. According to him, there is salvation. There is salvation for those who committed suicide because of this split second that you ask forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Nanosecond is not even measured. It's That's a split I believe. Second. Fraction, Sister fraction of a second. No? Yeah. That there uh -huh. are just few souls who are in, in, For, in hell. hell. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But, but forgiveness you know the of other God religion, always... Father? Uh -huh. The other religion, uh, I, I think I took this up in one of our uh, Zoom prayer meetings. The one, the statement of Bed Fridulia. MJ, uh, how, uh, I'm, I'm, he's a pastor in, in another religion, and he mm -hmm. really said that nobody will go to hell because when Jesus died for us, he saved everybody. Nobody's exempted. Mm -hmm. But then, but then when we when we uh, answered him back that no, because there are. People who are who bad. ask forgiveness when they die. No, no bell. All are all are safe. But, but then it's a never ending argument. So we just keep we we shut our <laughs> mouths <laughs> and we let him win in the argument. Because he's a pastor. <laughs> it's, it's it's a useless argument. <laughs> He is our president. Well, for me, <laughs> the forgiveness is unlimited while yeah. we live. Yeah. Uh -uh. yeah. Uh -uh. And then time for mercy, time for forgiveness. And when we die, the justice is there. But you see, if you have that nanosecond, second, you ask for forgiveness. Short as it is, but it is worthwhile. But others would God's not ask mercy. for forgiveness. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is God's mercy. Wow. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Father. <laughs> mercy. The divine mercy, really. Uh, yeah. Divine mercy. Yes. Uh -huh. And uh, God, so uh, God, so loved the world, like He loves us that He even sent His uh, only begotten Son no, for to die and uh, to die for us. No, so that means that we are all important to God. We are all important. We are all precious. So He will yes. not. He will do His. <clears throat> his uh, he will do His best. No, His divine mercy is extended to save yeah. us because, because because he knows we belong to him we belong we belong to him we yeah. are his we are his property mercy we are his is the highest. Love. Oh. mercy is the highest form of love oh. god is mercy god oh. is mercy yes, yes. god is mercy yes. and fathomable mm -hmm. divine yes. mercy immeasurable talaga because god is love the ocean so true enough in naman yan. yung Christ died for all of us he saved us but it depends on our response to his yeah. saving power 
still yeah. still individual response yes oh. individual response okay wow so uh, the mercy of god you. has allowed us to <laughs> to be expanded <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> Thank you, Amen. Father. Welcome. Amen. Thank you very much, so Father. We will wow. welcome every moment the mercy of God, the forgiveness of God. There is no recourse than to have the mercy of God in our lives. The justice of God comes when we do not have the mercy of God. But then the mercy of God is always preached to us. It's a language of love and love and God is mercy. Amen. 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 The Lord be with you. And and with your Lord. Your Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. The Holy Amen. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good night. Good night. Thank you very much, Father. Thank you so much, Father. Again, thank you very much. See you tomorrow. If if we are if we are in tune with living our Christian faith more fully, we will surely recognize the many opportunities that our parish community offers us to grow in God's love and grace. Second, in our family, at our workplace, or in our leisure, we too can find many opportunities to show that our love for God is our only motive and strength in our daily living. Third, are we conscious of God's presence and participation in our daily living? Do we push him to the background of our lives and take his love for granted. How does God want you to love him more personally each, each day? Amen. 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 Thank you very much, Tita Bell. So let's pray. Glory be to the Father. Glory be to the Father. Glory be to the Father. To the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now and ever. And ever. And ever. And ever. world without end. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, God is the Son, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Wow, very nice. Thank you very much. Wow. Thank you. Good night, all. Good wow. night. Good night. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Thank, Thank you. you. Of course. Let me get you back.